my channel. Today, I want to talk about the Caldecott Award. I want to share with you some of my picks that I think would make great recipients of this award. Now, I'm only going to share a couple with you, basically the ones that I could get from the library. <laughs> I come in from a small town in a small state, so not all of the books were at my library, but if you stick around till the very end, I'll have a full list for you that you can download for free with all of my picks on it, as well as an activity that you can do in your classroom. So stick around to the end for that. But first, the Caldecott Award is being given out on January 24th at 9 a.m. This award is given out every year in the middle of January to an artist that has a picture book with the best illustrations. This award is given by the American Library Association and there is certain criteria that they follow to choose the recipient. So the members of the Caldecott Committee who are librarians from across the country come together and they read thousands of books throughout the year. I mean, sounds like a pretty great job, doesn't it? <laughs> and they base their selection on four criteria. The first one is how well is the art executed? Basically, is it good art? The second criteria, how does the art match the story? So is the style or the medium a good fit for the tone and the theme of the storyline of the book? The third criteria, is the art important to the story? So do you get insight into the story through the illustrations that you don't necessarily get through the text. And the fourth criteria, which is probably my favorite, does it have the audience of children in mind? Does it make a child want to pick up the book and read it? But you also have to remember that the award is not the most popular book of the year. It's really solely focused on those illustrations. So now I wanna share with you some of my favorite books that were released in the year 2021 that I think would make good recipients for the Caldecott Award. The first book that I have is Dream Street. This book is beautiful and made up of a vivid cast of characters. The bright, colorful collages really pull you in and make you want to be a part of the community that's being shared in the story. And you can't help but want to meet each unique character that's in this story. The next book that I have is I Sang You Down from the Stars. And again, beautiful illustrations. I'm probably going to say that a lot <laughs> throughout this video. But in this one, there's a lot of background information that the artist gives at the end of the story. And this indigenous author and illustrator work together to create the story and the imagery that went along with it. The artist created what she calls a swoosh that goes throughout the story and it connects the things that are happening in the beginning of the book and brings it full circle to events at the end of the story. And it's a great connection and really brings that whole story together. An amazing book. The next book that I have is called Mel Fell. And you always know it's a great book when you pick it up off the shelf and you're holding it the right way, but it's also the wrong way at the same time. <laughs> I picked this one up and I was so confused, but that's what makes this book so neat and so unique. You hold the book this way, and in the store the bird is falling, and you see how he falls down through the pages until eventually he hits the water, and you turn, turn, turn the book, and at the end, you read it going the other way. Such a fun and unique way to read a story with kids that you don't normally and it will keep them so engaged. So I really think the clever use of page space and how it makes this book almost a physical experience for kids really made it stand out to me as a possible recipient for the Caldecott Award. This next one is another one that I loved. This one is called Off Limits. The visual humor in this book is amazing and the illustrator did such a wonderful job that the story could almost be a wordless picture book. So in this story, the young girl sneaks into her dad's office, which we can all relate to home offices these days, and finds all of the amazing office supplies that are in there and makes just a wonderful creative mess basically with it 
you can see the thoughts going on in her head and know exactly what she's thinking without even reading the words. So I think the illustrator did a wonderful job in this book of telling the story and this is definitely one that will appeal to kids and will have everyone laughing out loud by the end of it. Another book that I have that I think could win the Caldecott Medal this year is one that I shared in my video last week. This one is Milo Imagines the World. In this book, the illustrator does this great job of using mixed media to draw the illustrations of what's happening in the book. But in the story, Milo is imagining things and he's drawing it in his notebook. So the illustrator does this amazing job of going from telling the story to sharing what Milo is drawing and makes the drawings appear as though a kid has drawn them. So they go from their wonderful work of art and transition into a child's work of art and what it looks like if they were drawing something. And by using those simple childlike drawings using crayons or colored pencils, it appears, we really step into Milo's mind and understand what he's thinking. So I think that was an amazing job by the illustrator in this book. The next book that I have is Is Was. And in this book, the gorgeous illustrations are really the star of the book. There are very few words, and I will mention the words are a little confusing, I found, but the illustrations are beautiful. And the whole story is about the concept of change and how something is becomes something that was. And you really see that through each illustration in the story. How it is sunny, and then how it was sunny and is now raining. And it shows those different changes throughout a child's day as they go through, but it's beautifully portrayed in this book. The illustrations are very calming and kind of a reminder to slow down and notice the changes. And it really evokes that emotion in the reader as you're going through the story. Another great contender for the Caldecott Book Award. Another book that uses collage images is Wonder Walkers. And as I was reading this one, I was tempted to put my hand down and touch the pages because of the collage effect that the illustrator uses. Felt like I should almost be able to feel the different layers. That's how amazing of a job she did with making this story come to life. And in the end, the illustrator talks about the paper that she makes using her own homemade stamps and tissue paper to really create the effects in each one of her illustrations. Another book that I wanted to share is The Lost Package. And this one I feel like really fits that third criteria in that it tells more of the story through the illustrations that the words don't necessarily share. So in the story, a package is traveling, but doesn't make it to its final destination and gets lost instead. But it takes us through the process of creating and mailing a package and what could happen to it along the way. Each illustration on the pages shows those different steps in more depth and more detail than the words do. And the watercolors that the illustrator uses really brings the ideas to life in this book. We're getting closer to the bottom of the pile, but I still have a couple more to share with you. This next one is Have You Ever Seen a Flower? And I don't know if this one jumped out to me because my favorite color is pink but there are some amazingly vibrant colors in this book. The main one being the color pink. The illustrations in this book have this crayon-like texture that really make you stand up and take notice. It was almost to the point where I wasn't even reading the words. I was so enthralled in the images that that's where my focus was throughout the story. And I think that really says a lot about the illustration, how I was just drawn to what the artist had created and was not even <laughs> reading what the words were. The beginning of the story starts with this drab gray cityscape and there's one tiny little pop of color. But as you go through the story, that becomes bigger and brighter. And the neon colors really work together to create this abstract art in this book. The next book I have is also one that I shared last week in my favorites from 2021. This one is Outside Inside. In this story, the illustrator does this amazing job of capturing the big emotions. You can really see on each person's face the emotions that they're feeling, and as the reader, you can connect with each one of them. 
whether they are feeling sad or happy, lonely or excited, you can really feel each one of those emotions through the diverse cast of characters in this book. And each of the characters and all of the details that go into each image really convey a sense of community and again evoke those powerful emotions from each image. And the last book that I wanted to share with you today is I'll Meet You in Your Dreams. This is another book where the watercolor illustrations could almost tell the whole story on their own, that they add so much to the story, more than just what the words are offering. And this is another book where you need to turn the pages and it gives you a different perspective on what's happening in the book and makes it that much more engaging for the reader. Another great book that I think would make a good contender for the Caldecott Book Award. So those are the books that I physically had to share with you today, but I have a lot more on my list. So I'm going to leave a link in the description box down below where you can download the full list of books that I think would make great contenders for the Caldecott Book Award for this year. Along with that list, I have a little activity that you can do with your students. You can host your own mock Caldecott Awards. So I've created a couple different things that you can use and students can rate either the books that I've shared today or you can choose your own as a class and you can rate them and decide as a class which one you think should win the award. Then I recommend on January 24th that you either watch the award ceremony or check in with the American Library Association later in the day to see which book has won the Caldecott Award for the year. And if you follow me on Instagram, I will make sure to post it there as well so that we can all celebrate this book and the amazing illustrations that are in it. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit that red subscribe button down below because I'll be back next Sunday night with more read aloud tips and book ideas that you can share in your classroom right away. Have a great week.